Good morning, good morning. Here we are, just came from the floor. We are passing uh, the PACT Act. It's pretty exciting. Let's start with the beginning of the week, earlier this week, when the President of the United States delivered a State of the Union address that gave the American people hope and confidence in their future, had empathy for those uh, who are still suffering from the aftermath of COVID and uh, the economic downside of all of that, and again uh, talked about our commitment to democracy by helping the people of Ukraine. Let me just start with Ukraine. It's just amazing to see the diabolical actions taken uh, by Putin uh, as he has complete disregard for sovereignty, democracy, or human life, including civilian lives and those of children. Very pleased that we had a very strong bipartisan resolution yesterday uh, expressing support for the people of Ukraine and talking about our commitment for uh, helping with their secu uh, defense, helping uh, with their economy, helping with their humanitarian needs. Uh, and then, again, we will be in our uh, appropriations bill. We received the president's request uh, taking uh, having that under consideration now as to how we go forward. Uh, the There's so much to be said about Ukraine, including just the most recent statement by the readout from the French on the Macron-Putin Macron, uh, conversation. Uh, I don't know whose analysis it is, but the, uh, the readout was that the worst is yet to come. There's more bad to come. So it's pretty pretty horrible. So it, again, I want to salute the president. He, working with our allies, uh, present, uh, are presenting a united front against Putin. If his, if his intention was to divide uh, NATO and, uh, and the West, not just NATO, but other countries, in fact, he has instead unified them even further in terms of their commitment to sovereignty, democracy, and uh, Peace, 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 peace. Uh, again, over the past year, the U.S. has sent to Ukraine over a billion dollars, about a billion, over a billion dollars in security assistance. And again, with our allies, and continue to do even more in those areas I mentioned: security, economics, uh, their economy, and their human, meeting their humanitarian uh, needs. The president also talked in his speech about some unity measures uh, in the Congress of the United States. We are now in the midst of, of completing the Competes Act. Uh, we call it Competes. It has another name, America Competes in 2022, the America Competes Act. They have a different name, but we have the same goal. It's about three things. It's about, it's about making chips, developing chips, $52 billion for chips and semiconductors. It's about addressing the supply chain needs, $48 billion to address the supply chain, to increase supply and therefore reduce cost and, and make us independent and self-sufficient as a country by not depending on the needs of some countries, the uh, supplies of some countries of concern. And then the third part, uh, which is about education and research and STEM a STEM uh, research, science, technology, uh, engineering, and math in order to have more diversity and m more everyone participating in the uh, economic security and prosperity of our country. The President also talked about what we can do in some other areas in fighting cancer, uh, opioids, issues like that, where I think we do have a common ground and can participate. And he talked about our veterans uh, in that in that unity message. And in that, uh, he talked, and I was particularly excited about honoring the PACT Act. Uh, some of you have heard me say before, this goes way back 40 years from me, as a chair of the California Democratic Party when I went with Dick Gregory uh, for uh, um, a, to be part of a hunger strike with our Vietnam vets who were protesting against the use of Agent Orange and what it meant uh, to their health after the war. It took us a very long time to address those concerns. In fact, we didn't really complete it until a few years ago when we addressed the 
uh, Blue Water, the Navy, part of that. But we can't wait that long for the burn pits. So right now on the floor, we are just gaveling down, and that's why I was running a little bit late, the burns pits, legis burns pits legislation, uh, where our young people, who are our, our men and women in uniform, whatever they uh, uh, find themselves in harm's way uh, to fight for our freedom, are also in harm's way. Uh, because of the burn pits. And uh, they have cancer after the fact. Sometimes it doesn't even come until six, seven years later. But the fact is, if they were present, they are, there is a presumption uh, that that, uh, it, that is a relationship. Uh, we had a press conference yesterday on it. We, we had our amendments yesterday. Today we passed the bill, and now we will um, work with the Senate uh, to make it easier and healthier for our, you know, it's a cost of war. And it really amazed me, and I'm rarely amazed and surprised around here. But for the Republicans to go to the floor and say, the veterans really don't want this help with their help because it's going to cost money. And they're more concerned about the budget of the bud than they are about their health. Oh, really? You just gave tax cuts in 2017 to the richest people in America. Tax cuts for the rich, cancer for our veterans. That's how we see this discussion and this debate. That's how Mr. Raul Ruiz, uh, who's been a very important part of all this, says it, and I agree with him. Mr. Uh, Mark Takano, a chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, has done a, a great job with all of this, and I'm very proud of his work honoring our pact, and honoring the pact, and then uh, uh, Elaine Loria, who has a veteran herself, uh, also uh, a member of the Armed Services Committee, very much a part of this legislation. But again, um, uh, we have bipartisan support. There's a good number of Republicans who voted for it today. A la larger number did not, but nonetheless, <clears throat> it's a bi bipartisan bill. So getting back to the State of the Union, I was very proud of what the President had to say about Ukraine, what he had to say about our veterans, what he had to say about our country's future, and the um, priorities that he put forth where he saw places where we could be unified, Democrats and Republicans, uh, in coming together on all of this. Uh, we are in the midst of um, putting together our omnibus bill, so I'm going to have to run. Uh, we are also in the midst of putting together our competes bill, and uh, both of them, uh, the omnibus has a shorter fuse, but both of them need to be done as soon as we possibly can. So with that, I'll be happy to take any questions you may have. Yeah. Why don't you go first this time? Obviously, the 1-6 committee had a filing last night. I know you don't want to talk directly about their work. That's right. Obviously, you don't want to talk about their work, but but that said, when you were on the dais on January 6th, yes. your security detail rushed you out. Right. Do you think that the threat was there, that they were trying to overturn the election, the mob outside the building? Because that's what's reflected in the filing today. What, was your, what, what, what did you think was going on when that happened, when that happened on January 6th? Frankly, my concern was for the safety of my members, if you want to know what I was thinking. I was thinking about the safety of my members, the safety of our staff, the safety of the press who were covering us. So my, my, I was totally consumed, and I didn't want to leave, because I was like, well, I, you know. But again, that was, that's, that was totally that, consumed my thoughts. You didn't yeah. I thought it was a, correct, a, a threat to our democracy, our constitution, and the Capitol building. And all that entails, Jay. Could you, Jake. On the omnibus, can we get an update on where you are? I mean, it seems like there's a bunch of riders still outstanding. And furthermore, on the twenty-two and a half billion in COVID money, Republicans are balking at that. How do you how do you see how do you see the state of play? Well, the appropriators will are, will be negotiating all of this. Uh, the fact is, the twenty-two billion dollars for COVID is absolutely necessary. In fact, we'll probably We'll need more as we uh, uh, need more uh, therapies. The, this, one, of the per, I th one of the pieces of this is to buy the pills that will be, you, t you, you get a sign, you take the pill. It's no longer about something being a sub-freezing temperature, 
only um, having a shelf life of a certain amount of day. This is science. This is going forward. So I would hope that they would see uh, the wisdom of the science of what we need to do in terms of COVID because what we, the last thing we need is more transmission. Transmission is where variants are created. And a new variant is a new challenge. So let's do as much prevention or early intervention as we can. And I would hope that they would. Now, how they pay for it and this or that, that's, that's a negotiation there. And uh, what was the other part? Do you plan on pushing that out as a separate vote? And then how do you plan on handling the Ukraine money? Well, at the present time, the fastest way for us to get the Ukraine money is for us to have it on the um, uh, th this legislation, so we'd hope that we can just come to agreement to putting it forth, and it's about, again, humanitarian assistance, it's about uh, security assistance, and it's about economic assistance for them. So it's, a, it's very important, and this is the legislative process. We will, the, the, uh, I'm an appropriator, so, you know, I'm always trusting that left to their own devices, the appropriators, Democrats, Republicans, House and Senate understand the urgency of uh, meeting the needs of the American people as we keep government open. And, and in this case, we have a pandemic to address and the challenge that we face in Ukraine, and hopefully that will Now, that will be, Ukraine and, and COVID will be emergency. It will be emergency. They won't be part of the, the, the regular um, budget caps and the rest. Yes, ma'am. Madam Speaker, average gas prices in the Bay Area surged above $5 a gallon for the first time ever in history. So how Two, about $5 a gallon. Yeah, above $5 a yeah. gallon. So how high do gas prices need to get before you would support something like opening up federal lands to drilling? Well, let me just say that um, the uh, issue of the price of gas and the price of oil is directly related to what is happening in the Ukraine. Doesn't mean it can't go up and down without a, a Russian diabolical intervention into a sovereign country, but it is related to that. And I heard a pro um, parliamentarian from Ukraine today saying, our people are being killed, our country is being overrun, and people are complaining about paying a little more for the price of gas. Well, we don't want people to have to pay a little more for the price of gas. And one of the suggestions that has come up is that we have uh, a holiday from the gas tax. I bring that up because that's what we've heard the most of. And that sounds good. But do you know that there is no guarantee that the oil companies pass that reduction on to the consumer? And it's very hard to write a bill that requires them to pass it on to the consumer. You, you think that it's at the pump, it's the consumer paying it, comes off, but that's not the way it works. So I, I think that if we can, reduce, we can have a holiday that guarantees the consumer benefits rather than more profits for the oil companies, that would be a, a, a path that we can take. The president has already uh, talked about releasing oil from the, uh, the this, as he already has done uh, uh, from the sprawl and the and and, and other but I'm not for uh, drilling on public lands. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Just to follow up on Chad's question with respect to what you and every member experienced, and given this filing that the committee released last night. Do you believe former President Trump should be held criminally responsible? I'm not going to answer any questions about what the committee is doing. Uh, they have their independence. I've kept myself completely separate from their actions, and I have no intention of, of commenting on them except to thank them for seeking the truth and to seeking, <coughs> and seeking the truth so that the American people know what the assault was on our Constitution, our Congress, our con uh, capital, capital, that's easy. You just repair it. The traumatic effect on our workers and the rest, harder to repair. Uh, it was a terrible thing. And again, seeking the truth is very important, and it won't be happening with my answering questions in here. But right now, we're trying to save the lives of our veterans. We're trying to meet the needs of the American people with our, our, our omnibus bill uh, and, and we have a, 
many challenges ahead of us. The president put forth a blueprint, again, uh, for strength and progress and confidence and empathy uh, for meeting the needs of the American people. That's what our legislative focus is. The investigation of the committee is their work. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Push by some Democrats to ban the import of Russian oil, and mm -hmm. I believe that Senators Manchin and Murkowski are going to uh, put forth a bill on that today. Where do you stand? I'm, against, I'm all for that. Ban it. Ban the oil. Ban the oil coming from Russia. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Madam Speaker, uh, we saw the State of the Union, uh, no masks there. We saw the guidance yeah. come down on Capitol Hill. Is it time to reopen the Capitol to visitors, and could this be the last extension of proxy voting in the House? No, the, that, that's up to the uh, Capitol physician. That, that we take all of our guidance from there, including opening the House. I think you'll see an unfolding now of the uh, Capitol opening. It's, it's about COVID, and it's about security. Mostly it's about COVID, though. And uh, so that will be up to the sergeants at arm, and it will be up to the Capitol physician. And we just take our guidance from them. I mean... We were very fortunate that they came to the conclusion that all members could participate uh, in, in the State of the Union address, but it was up to them. We, we could not make that call. Yeah. Speaker, yes, sir. Speaker, on the last question, on the State of the Union, um, we yeah. did see numerous outbursts from Representatives Boebert and Green during mm -hmm. President Biden's speech. Um, as I'm sure you probably remember, when Congressman Joe Wilson yelled, you lie at President Obama in 2009, the House actually passed a, a resolution of disapproval on that. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't heard any talk of that now, but I'm wondering just what is your reaction to those outbursts? Should any action be taken? <clears> and <throat> what does it say about this? Process? Let me just say this. I agree with what Senator Lindsey Graham said. Shut up. That's what he said to them. I think they should just shut up. Thank you all very much. Thank you.